Are you ready for the truth? Bring it on! In this present crisis, government is not the solution to our problem. Government is the problem. Do you want the whole truth? I don't think you're ready. Governments don't control things. A government can't control the economy without controlling people. It's Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth. Welcome back. Crane Durham's Nothing But Truth probably on AFR Talk. And uh, last hour we were blessed to have Carol Bruin join us and discuss the suicide of her son at the age of 15 four years ago and her victory and her testimony. And I just want to say that uh, my apologies. I the, the emotion got a little much. Um, didn't anticipate it, but... It's certainly something that what was beautiful about it was that we saw Carol and her family in victory and knowing that God is faithful and he's right there. And I really can't let this moment pass without recognizing just we talk about life a lot. We talk about, I mean, got statistics but statistics whenever we talk about a subject like this we think of people in our own life and by a certain age you will know somebody unfortunately it's more than likely you'll know somebody who has been through this or has done it and uh, it's something that I think Sometimes we see people do it slowly, and sometimes they do it in an instant. And what was great about Carol and Aaron, for that matter, was that God never leaves us and he's reminding us that he created us and he loves us more than any any anybody anybody could um and and knowing that he created us he knows each and every facet of us and he knows that he's right there if we choose him and if you're listening to this broadcast and maybe you're not with the Lord yet, I encourage you to listen to Carol's testimony to also recognize that he is not moving away from you and you call out to him and he is there. When you, when, and the enemy doesn't want that. Enemy's always trying to put a divide. I don't remember the Remember the church lady uh, who did that Satan, you know, and all those jokes about that. But I'll tell you, the enemy is real. And whatever situation that you may be dealing with, and maybe you are upset with God in some way, go to him. Go to him. And know that Jesus, the very speaking of the name Jesus, makes demons tremble. So know that he is there and he is in victory. And it's something that I think if we can remind ourselves of that, we recognize what a gift life is and the opportunities we have and also the responsibility to witness to others. So, again, I would like to say that I really appreciate Carol and Aaron. Amazing, amazing people. And wonderful testimony. Amen. Amen. All right. So, shifting gears to Rand Paul. There's no right segue for that. Can't do it. Uh, Rand Paul is talking to Sean Hannity last night and Sean Hannity is asking asking him about the 
mainstream media and specifically how Republican RNC chair Rents Priebus has said, look, you're running a Hillary movie on CNN and, and, and ABC is doing one. You're going to do that. Well, look, you do that. You know what? We're going to we're not going to go to you and negotiate with you with the commissions on debates. We're going to go someplace else. And Rand Paul was talking about media bias and specifically George Stephanopoulos, the war on women and what began the use of the, I would say slogan, but also the campaign of the war on women, Republican men's war on women, or Republicans' war on women. And it didn't begin from the DNC. It actually began with George Stephanopoulos. Here's Rand Paul. Roll it. Well, you know, you can look back to the last primary season and you wonder whether there was collusion between some reporters. You know, Stephanopoulos asks an obscure question about Griswold and birth control when no Republicans were bringing up anything about trying to have any limits on birth control. Gris- yeah, and I'm, I'm in favor of the Griswold decision because I am in favor of privacy. But the thing is, is it was a weird thing to bring up in a debate. Nobody understood why. But then for two years, the president's campaign then ran ads saying that the Republicans were against people allowing birth control. So you wonder if there was a concerted action between a former Democrat operative and basically the president's campaign. Where- I'm saying that there, you, it makes you wonder, and he's also said publicly that he has frequent correspondence with his friends who are still involved with the White House. So the question is, are you going to get a fair shake? And I think it's a reasonable question for Republicans to ask, should we be scheduling debates and allowing people who used to and still do have contact with the active uh, Democrat Party, should we be subjecting ourselves to that, or should we try to have more neutral or objective uh, type of moderators? Speaking of that, and by the way, he was speaking with Geraldo on Geraldo's radio program, not Sean Hannity. And speaking of that, well, let's go back to the moment that it was brought up by George Stephanopoulos in that debate. Roll it. Governor Romney, do you believe that states have the right to ban contraception, or is that trumped by a constitutional right to privacy? Uh, George, this is an unusual uh, topic that you're raising. States have a right to ban contraception. I can't imagine a state banning contraception. I I can't imagine the circumstances where a state would want to do so. And if I were uh, a governor of a state or a a a legislator of a state, state, I would totally and completely oppose any effort to ban contraception. Uh, So you're asking, given the fact that there's no state that wants to do so, and I don't know of any candidate that wants to do so, you're asking, could it constitutionally be done? We can ask our constitutionalist here. Uh, (laughs) I'm sure Congressman Okay, come on, come on back. Do you believe that states have that right or not? George, I, I... I don't know whether the state has a right to ban contraception. No state wants to. I mean, the idea of, of you putting forward things that states might want to do that no one state, no state wants well, to do wait. and asking me whether they could do it or not is kind of a silly thing, I think. Governor, my, my, are- my, my, <laughs> Hold on a second. Governor, you went to Harvard Law School. Does, you know very well does the, does, this has is the based Supreme on... Court, has the Supreme Court decided that the states do not have the right to provide a contraception? Yes, I, they have. Oh, if, I, look, in 1965, I Griswold that, v. Connecticut. I believe in the, that the law of the land is as spoken by the Supreme Court and that if we disagree with the Supreme Court, and occasionally I do, then we have a process under the Constitution to change that decision, and it's, it's known as the amendment process. And I thought how Mitt Romney handled that was pretty, pretty amazing. And it originally alluded to Rick Santorum earlier on in that exchange. But bottom line, what's been happening for, well, to go back and look at the uh, presidential debates, and certainly you will see that the conservative is debating two people. If we look at the moderator versus the opponent. So, you know, this is, this is something Rents Previous has do- decided to do. I don't, here's my take. I don't think, I don't really, you know, Hillary movie and doing all that, I I really don't care about that. I think he should have done it regardless. Now, this may be the 
galvanizing force now that said, hey, boom, I'm going to do this. I'm going to come out. But I think the idea that we have to play, and I would just say not Republicans per se, I'm saying conservatives always have to play on the liberals' playground because the vast majority of media is that we're giving away an advantage. And rather than worry about how it's going to be characterized, we already know that the mainstream media is going to do that and say it's reactionary and what do you mean? But the evidence is so strong that, yeah, you won't get the far left, but they're never going to, you're never going to get them. You just won't get them because they, they actually hate you. As conservatives, they hate us. It's unfortunate. I, I think it's awful, but they're, they're, it's talking to somebody and showing them time and time again, here's what works. You want to help. You want to help. No, they look at you and you, they, they have the caricature of you that the mainstream media has drawn up about killing old people and wanting children to be sick because of arsenic in the water. I mean, that's how disturbing it is. Sometimes you've just got to say, and I'd say more times, a lot more times than not, you've, you've got to put it out there and say, look, I'm going to make my case to the American people. And recognize that the biggest mouthpiece out there will always has and continue to mischaracterize me. But I am not going to play the game with their rules. And I think it's a good move. Rents Priebus de defended his decision to Aaron Burnett on CNN. And here he is doing just that, answering the question why. Roll it. Well, look, there's plenty of people and groups out there that would love to host their debates. And the fact is, the, the, what, you're, what you're showing here is making our case that we ought not have moderators that are in the business of making news at the expense of our party and our candidates moderate our debates. And moreover, we ought not have moderators and companies that are in the business of promoting a Democratic opponent three years before an election. So, I mean, you're making our case, which is, number one, NBC and CNN, ought to halt their promotional movies of Hillary Clinton. Well, because you're if saying that, that if we air that, anything on Hillary Clinton, fine. even if it's but nasty, it's have, promoting her, but right? But I don't have... I, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. The fact is, if, if your company is so interested in spending millions of dollars in promoting Hillary Clinton, when they know darn well that Hillary Clinton and the people around her are gearing up for a presidential election, then that is a choice that as a news agency that's trying to be, or at least claims to be fair, ought to stop in their tracks and start to think about what the effects of that are. If you don't care or if CNN doesn't care, that's fine. Then I don't care either. We move on without <laughs> CNN and we move on without NBC. It's pretty simple. But where would you go, Rents Priebus? I mean, that's CNN and ABC. Roll it. You have Fox, you have PBS, you have ABC, you have CBS, you have a lot of other channels on cable. We can do uh, Salem Communications, we can do radio, we can do town halls, we can do Lincoln-Douglas debates. Right. You know, the, the sun doesn't rise and set with CNN and NBC. But Listen, ABC, I, I, Aaron, but, Aaron, I like you, just... I don't have a problem with you, but this is, yeah. <laughs> this is easy to understand. I think he's doing a pretty good job of defending his decision. And as we move to break, on the flip side, we're going to take a good look at Benghazi through the eyes of CNN. Yes, outbreaks of journalism at CNN. It's happening. And that's always a, a good thing because that will bring light to the truth when journalists are actually doing their job. We'll take a good look at that president is giving a press conference tomorrow what question would you ask the president you can get online and you can go to the american family brain durham's nothing but truth facebook page and you can answer that question or like the question that you like most if the comment's been made before plus we'll be taking your calls at the end of the segment so opportunity there to become part of the washington white house press corps one question, what would you ask? Green Durham's Nothing But Truth, AFR Talk.